Okay, good morning. This is Sunday morning and uh, we're outside and Pastor Jerry Tom is uh, getting ready to deliver the Word of God and I uh, hope everybody's good and fine. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, we're in this pandemic and lockdown on our nation and uh, we want to just encourage everyone today, uh, no matter what we go through, no matter how bad things may become, we have a Lord, we have a God that... Uh, that uh, takes care of you and I, and uh, we believe that God's going to do something powerful and mighty through this. And so, again, good morning, everyone. And uh, so, praise God. Pastor Jerry Tom. Good morning, uh, Pastor Jerry Tom from Winter Rock Christian Center, right across the Sports Center, Highway 264, and just greetings to you this morning. And hopefully, you're doing good and praying. And Stay inside. But this morning, I'd like to be speaking about what God spoke to me when we were in Israel. We were in Caesarea Philippi, where everything that uh, the tradition, the rabbi tradition, is that where uh, when Satan was cast out, he was cast out on Mount Hermon. And we, when we got there, uh, Jesus spoke, says, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they began to speak different things, Isaiah, Jeremiah, one of the prophets and all that. But Jesus says, Who do you say I am? And Jesus is the same today, yesterday, today, and forever. He's asking you that question. Who do you say I am up to this point? You've been going to church, and you've been going maybe once in a while, but you're listening to me. So who did Jesus? Who is Jesus in your life right now? And so, and then Jesus, Peter says, "You are the Son of the Living God." Jesus said, "This is a revelation from God. That my Father has shown it to you. This is not man, uh, Peter, freaking out that Jesus is the Son of God or anything else, but a revelation from God. The Father opened the eyes of Peter and saw Jesus." as the son of the living God. And Jesus says, because of that, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, to bind and to loose. And before he said that, I will build my church upon this revelation, the spirit-led vision of Jesus Christ, not something that man has figured out or a religion or something that is sort of, sort of like a denomination and all that. But this is a revelation from the Spirit of God. So I will build my church, my ecclesia, upon this vision, upon this revelation. He said, I'll, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So he says, I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven to bind and to loose. And he give us the authority to move. So when we were in, the, in that place, where Jesus spoke those words and we spoke about there are some uh, all these uh, shrines and idols and buildings that had built unto Satan worship of uh, of all these uh, pan religion different religions Zeus all these uh, were made uh, unto tabernacles were made unto them but they were in ruins but as we came back to Tiberias where we were staying that night three demons came and attack. It was sort of like a nightmare. We are outside in a house and uh, there was one on top of the house. One was, two of them were at the door and I ran out and began to attack them and I was beginning to elevate. They pulled me back down and I turned around and I rebuked them and they left. And I asked, and I asked God at that time, who are these? Who are these demonic spirits? And later on when this, uh, when this pen pandemic began to happen God spoke to me and says these demonic spirits are after when it comes when it comes it's called coronavirus it's going to take your elders the wisdom of the elders will be cut off to the next generation as well as uh, people that have been saved for years pastors and elders been going to church for years teaching their kids and all these things that have been beaten the devil is trying to cut it off. But I want you to understand, he says that these, uh, this demonic spirit is cutting off 
the wisdom to the next generation. And then the second thing he says that it's economy. He's going to shut down the economy and everything else is going to stop. No jobs and everything. And when we came back here, uh, God began to ask God, says, what are these? The last one he spoke about two weeks ago, he said, this last one is going to shut down the churches. So the last demonic spirit shut down the churches. These are demonic spirits coming from the bottom of the spit. These are being released into the world, globally shutting down economies and shutting down everything. Death is all around us. And I want you to understand, I want you to pray, seek God. And I began to ask us, what do we need to do? And then God began to speak to me. He says, that I want you to tell the people, tell the people, the church, don't worry about the church. Don't worry about the people coming to church. Some of them have been coming to church for years and years, and they've been taught, they've been, but they have not really risen up to that place where God wants them to be. He says that now, as pastors, some of you are worried, and what's going to happen to the people, that's going to happen, all this. Jesus says, don't worry. He says, I am the shepherd. Does not the Bible say that I am the shepherd? And he says in John 10, 7, I am the door of the sheep. I am the door. And he says in verse 11, I am the good shepherd. I give life for the, I, I lay down my life for the sheep. And the hireling, this is a job that pastors do. And the, when things happen, they run. But Jesus says, I lay my life down for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. Verse 14, I am the the good shepherd I know my sheep and I am known of mine he says my sheep know my voice and they follow me other voices they will not follow my sheep hear my voice and know them and they follow me and I give all unto them eternal life and and the day shall the day shall never perish neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand he says my father which gave them me is greater than all no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. So the church out there, they may be at home. They may be out there and you think that they're, uh, oh my God, they're going to go down. They're going to be weak and everything else. And, but God, Jesus says, I'm going to go to their house. Wherever they are gathered, there has been a movement, a revival of supernatural miracle signs and wonders of, a movement has happened. Churches are now being filled. Mega churches are coming together. Church everywhere. They're having all these churches going on. Revival going on. Miracle revival going on. But Jesus says, now it's going to be different. I will come into the household of the body of Christ. The body of the church. Wherever they are, I've gathered them into their home. They themselves need to... I will raise them up. I will speak to the father and the mother. And I will use them. And I will, there will be a visitation of my spirit upon them. So you that are listening to me in your house. You're not going to church. You're just there praying. Maybe praying. But I want you to understand. I want you to pray. Seek God. Because he's coming. He's going to come into your house. Way in the middle of the night. Somewhere along the way. You're going to hear his voice. You're going to hear the voice of the shepherd. So I want you to understand you're not alone. And God, and God Jesus says, in the household, there's going to be a revival. In the household, I will manifest myself. I will come to them. I will show myself to them. They will hear my voice. And when they hear my voice, they will obey what I speak to them. And they will begin to rise up in the very household. And you be out there listening to me, maybe out there somewhere uh, you're listening to me. I want you to understand that Jesus is coming to you. Jesus, the shepherd himself, will come into your house. And if you begin to change your life, change your mind, change your family, begin to speak to your family, begin to pray for your family, and plead the blood of Jesus Christ over them, rebuke the powers of darkness, rebuke that spirit, virus, coronavirus, it's in the name of Jesus, don't pray about it. Don't be saying, oh God, help me. Speak to him. Say unto this man, Jesus says, have faith in God. Say unto this man, be thou cast into the sea. If you shall not doubt in your heart 
and believe those things that which you say shall come to pass. You shall have whatsoever you said. Speak to it. Say in the name of Jesus Christ, spirit of death, call coronavirus. You're not coming to my house. In the name of Jesus Christ, call for the angels of God to surround you. Lord God, I pray for the angels to surround us, our family, who we are, everything that we are, our finances, our mind, our spirit, everything that we are. Let your protection come upon our lives. You as a church people there in your house, you need to start rising up because when he comes, you begin to pray maybe in the middle of the night when there is no sound, you're all alone, sitting on your bed, begin to speak, begin to cry, begin to call upon the name of the Lord because Jesus will give you things to speak and to pray about and he will give and you begin to move in your life. And I want you to understand that Jesus is there in your life. Secondly, he says, Call for the apostles, call for the pastors, call for the evangelists and teachers and pastors. It says, begin, let them begin to gather themselves. Pray about your church. Yes, they're being now. He says, I'm taking care of your flock. I'm taking care of you and your flock. You don't worry about it because I'm coming to them and I will raise up a revival the world has never known before. Jesus is speaking to us as pastors and as well as apostles. He says, I want you to pray. In the middle of the night, begin to get a hold of God. Get a hold of me. My spirit will come to you. I will put words in your mouth what to say, what you should pray for as you ought. Because the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost inside of us, will, will begin to intercess. When, in prayer, people that we should be praying for, we don't even know who should we pray for. The Holy Spirit knows. So as we begin to gather at night, begin to pray all across America. Some of you are listening, maybe in Canada, all across America, in Arizona, New Mexico. Wherever you are listening to me, I'm calling to you right now. I gather, let's gather ourselves in the middle of the night, maybe 12, 1 a.m. in the morning. Let's begin to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the Spirit of God begin to flow across the nation. Rebuke, bind that spirit called coronavirus. Let's stop it. Let's cast it back into outer darkness where it came from. Let us cut off right now in Jesus' mighty name and begin to pour out your, your life, your, your whole life onto him because when this visitation comes, when this revival, which we call revival, it's not going to be a revival. It's not going to really be an outpouring. It's not going to be a supernatural healing miracle power. It's going to be his visitation. He's going to come into our churches. He's going to walk down the aisles and we're going to feel him. He's going to bless us. He's going to bless us with his presence. His life will begin to flow in us. He will change and transform those that come to church at that time when everything is lifted up. He says, I'm coming in. There's going to be a revival of me coming in into the churches and I will raise my church that the world has never seen before. And I want you to understand God is dealing with all those outsiders. People are saying stuff. People are moving, saying things. And uh, when this coronavirus has come, the spirit of death, this evil spirit, darkness has come upon the land. It is also rising up all these spiritual things. Witchcraft is is, is raising up. Uh, atheists is being raised up. All these people are saying stuff against the church, against the pastors, against preachers. Because this coronavirus is raising the darkness of evil among the land. But when Jesus Christ comes, when the Holy Ghost began to come, there's going to be a revival where Jesus, the Bible says that he was sitting there one day, people were just touching his clothes, and they were being made whole. As many as touched the him of his garments were be, they were just being made whole, I meaning their soul, their mind, and their spirit was restored. There was joy as never seen before, a revival that Jesus Christ is real. Not later on saying, I wonder if I'm saved, wonder where when Jesus Christ is. No, he's coming right now. And I speak to you this afternoon, this, evening, uh, this morning, I speak to you right now. Call him on Jesus. Get yourself together. Believe in Jesus Christ. Don't stop. Begin to pray because he's coming. He's coming right now into your household, into your living room. 
into your bedrooms and he's coming into the church when this thing lifts up he's going to come into our churches we're going to see a, a, a renewal a transformation as we have never seen before not a healing miracle not just a revival not just people shouting but the presence of him the peace the joy the comfort the kindness the gentleness that is missing today is going to come He's going to come with the power of God, and he's, he's going to show himself as he is never, as we have never seen before. And I encourage you. I encourage you. Believe God. Jesus, <laughs> Di <laughs> This is God speaking to all of us. ego，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这个，这
the name of Jesus, our Creator. We call our Creator. He, he, his, his name is Jesus. The Bible says without Him was not anything that was made. He created everything. And His name is Jesus. And the Bible says that in my name you shall cast out devils. In my name you shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. In my name, the Bible says that. And the Bible, Paul says, in Him we live and move. In Jesus Christ. He says, I and you, you and me. So when He comes inside your life, He's going to speak to you. you, can, you when you hear His voice, you can hear Daddy. You can hear your Father. You can hear your Creator speaking to you. You've come home. You will have come home. So uh, as, a, as a pastor and as an apostle, I speak to you, leaders of your tribe. Listen. Call him on Jesus. He's real. So I pray for you right now. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray, Lord God, all across America and to every tribe, Lord God, right now, Father, every leadership, every apostle that are listening to me, Father, let your spirit begin to flow. Let your spirit of hope, oh God, not just hope, but Father, Lord Jesus, there is a greater move that's coming, a greater, oh God, that we've never seen before, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we stand together, apostles and prophets and pastors, evangelists, teachers, oh God, we stand together. We pull down the strongholds of death called coronavirus right now, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, oh God, we call upon your name, Father. I pray for the church members that are listening to me. Let your spirit begin to come upon them. Let your peace come upon them, Father, right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Amen.